Tuesday. Yay! Okay, let's see if we can get this done. Alright, we're gonna wait for people to start coming on. Hi guys. Birdie is deciding to show her face at least for a couple minutes. We'll see how long she lasts. Perfect. Um, if you guys just want to toss me a thumbs up, if you hear me okay with my headphones or a little heart, or love that. Thank you for that little floating heart. Um, we are going to start laying on our backs. So if you guys want to lay on your back, find a comfortable position for your butt. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Once you find yourself lying on your back, head nice and heavy, I want you to plant your feet knees up towards the sky. This week our focus is feeling good. <laughs> your focus might be bird fed. And as you find your feet flat on the floor, I just want you to find your hands somewhere onto your body. So maybe that's one hand to chest, one hand to belly. Let your knees either knock open or knock together, just listening to what your hips want right now. And then feel the front of the chest start to get a little heavier. Feel the backs of the shoulders try and drop into the mat. And then let your eyes soften to a close if that feels comfortable for you. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Find a nice softening exhale out through your mouth. Bring your awareness to the sensation of your hands on your body as you take a couple more breaths in and out. For anybody just popping on, we're just breathing, hands on the bud, no props needed. Finding a sense of self for a minute before we start moving. Notice if your lips are pressed together or if your jaw is clenched. Try and let that soften a little bit. One more big inhale and exhale. And then I want you to keep your legs as is. Just send your arms straight back overhead, letting the knuckles rest on the floor. If that feels uncomfortable with straight arms, just soften the elbows a little bit. Try and take up as much space as you can on that mat the next time that you inhale, trying to breathe into your back ribs, softening the eyebrows, feeling the ears get heavier to the shoulders. And as you exhale, send a little force out through the mouth, like you're blowing out 100 birthday candles all at once. <sighs> Trying to feel your waist contract to a more narrow area. One more big inhale here. Breathing into the hips, the shoulders, the back, the throat. And on that next exhale, slide the hands just beneath the head, creating that little basket for your head to lie in. Gently extend your legs nice and long down the center of your mat. If you have any low back tension, you can absolutely plant your feet knees up towards the sky. It definitely feels a little bit nicer in the lumbar. And on your next breath, just tip the elbows slightly forward towards the ceiling. Pause here. I want you to think of the tips of the elbows reaching to the sky instead of towards each other or to the sides of the room. And then you're going to slowly widen them apart, feeling the tips of the elbows tap the mat. Exhale, as the back of the shoulder stays heavy, the elbows drop forward in and up. Head is pressing into the palms, trying to let your pecs relax, feeling the width across your back. And then inhale, just wide, and almost like your elbows are getting pulled in opposite directions, getting a little bit of a bicep shoulder stretch. One more. Good, the next time you feel your head heavy in that little hammock you've created with your interlaced fingers, take a breath in. And on your next exhale, draw the ribs in towards the mat and find your upper ab curl. Hang out for a second. If your legs are extended long, you won't curl as high. It's not a big deal. I just want you to curl as high as you can, keeping your legs completely soft. Try and pull your front two ribs together a little more. Let your head press into your palms a little bit more. And then tip the elbows to the sky, really feeling the width across your back until you feel those ooh, upper abs shake. Take a breath as you lay your head right back down. Open the elbows wide, take that little bicep shoulder stretch. Exhale, elbows tip forward and up. Head stays heavy as you feel the movement of your rib cage up and over your belly button. Not physically, but just like you know, the idea of it. And then re-engage, tip the elbows up, press the head back, give your head a little wiggle in those palms so you feel the upper abs work. 
And then lay your head right back down into the mat. Elbows nice and wide. I want you to just take four more here, just making that small connection to the stretch at the bottom. And that nice engagement at the top. Giving yourself the slightest little double chin to make sure you aren't pressing your chin to your chest, but pressing your head into your hands. And then gently laying it down, feeling like the crown of the head can lengthen one centimeter farther back than it did the first time you curled up. For two. Good. The next time that we find that nice deep flexion, you guys, we're going to keep it there. We're going to think of the middle of our waist like a paper towel that you are wringing out. So the next time that you curl forward, legs still nice and relaxed. Again, feet can be planted if it feels nicer. You're gonna think about the tip of your nose rotating ever so slightly towards your left hip bone. Pause there. I'm not in a full twist. I can't look towards the camera because my chest isn't twisted that far over. My right leg is still super heavy and I'm not hiking my right hip. So feeling just this little twist as your right armpit lifts up towards your left big toe. Find the heaviness of your head and your palms. Twist back to center. Lay your head right back down. Elbows open wide. Deep breath in. Exhale, pull the front two ribs together, tip the elbows forward, find your curl forward. Hang out for a breath, hello belly button. Take an exhale, take the tiniest little twist to the right. Left leg is still dead weight, nose just reaches for that hip bone or big toe. Can you press your head heavier into your palms, tip your elbows to the sky again, feeling that left armpit lift up and over. Twist back to center, nose to navel, lay your head right back down. Open the elbows wide. We're just creating space, taking our sweet ass time. You ain't no rushing. There's nowhere to be besides here right now. Finding this alternating twist. Notice if you have a little bit more space on one side of the body, if you do totally normal. Try not to match both sides. What I want you to feel is the same or similar sensation in the muscles. So if one side turns an inch to the left and the other side five inches to the right, no biggie, just feel your obliques and then you've done the work. Good. The next time that you curl up and over to the left, we're gonna keep it there. Perfect. As you find the tip up, up of the elbows, find the curl forward of the head. You're gonna rotate yourself to the left and just pause. Take an inhale and press your head back into your palms and take 10 tiny, little pulses. Now I want you to think about your butt. Your abs are gonna to start to burn no matter what, but is your butt clenching? If so, let that puppy relax. This is all about the rotation of the ribs up and over. You can flex the feet, press the heels down into the mat for a little bit of support if you need it. For three, is your head still heavy in your palms? For two, hold that deep twist on one. Find center, don't lower the head. Tip the elbows to the sky again. Let your gaze go higher than your big toes. Curl an inch higher, rotate up and over to the right. Hello, right hip bone. 10 little pulses, no biggie. Unclench those booty cheeks. Press your head heavier into your palms. Don't worry about how big your range of motion is. Feel the exhale and the burn and maybe a little vibration. For four, three, two. Last one, we find center the fun part, just 10 pulses up through center. Legs are still jelly, upper abs work harder, tip the elbows up to the sky one last time for four. Head is even heavier for three. Last two, relax it on one. Let the elbows open wide. Plant your feet. Open the arms to a T if you have the space, to a goal post if you don't. And then glue your legs all the way together. Give your head a little shake, yes and no, and then nice and slow, let your heavy legs drop over to the left. Try and keep your right shoulder grounded. Take a breath in as you exhale, slowly pull the legs back through center. Let them knock up and over to the right. Try to let them fully find the floor as your left shoulder stays glued down. Do this one more time either side using your low abs as you pass through. Trying not to force yourself into a twist that doesn't feel doable for your body. And trying to release anything that you don't need. One more to the right. Beautiful. 
The next time that you find yourself through center, you're gonna extend your legs nice and long. Arms are gonna reach straight back by the ears, pointing through the fingertips, through the toes. If you follow other Pilates accounts or go to Pilates, you'll know that it's March Matness, Matt, M-A-T-ness. So we're going through the moves of the classical mat work. And as much as I'm not a classical teacher, we're gonna add it into the mix today. So with fingertips up to the sky, plug the shoulders down. You're gonna nod your chin to chest, reach your fingertips for your toes. I want you to press the backs of your heels down into the mat. Think about your belly button sliding in and up so you can curl a little higher and like someone is pulling you by all 10 fingers. Roll yourself up and over those toes. Do not touch those toes. Imagine that there is a beach ball right inside of your belly on top of your thighs. Hug that beach ball. Take a breath in. Restack your spine until you are seated nice and tall. You can always bend the knees here if you have super tight hips, I feel you. You're gonna pull your belly button to the spine. You're gonna hollow back. Now I want you to pause at the tip of your butt crack. That's right, the tip of your butt crack. Hold it there, plug the shoulders back. Press the heels down even more, bend the knees if you have to, and then think about where your head is in space. Can you bring it back in line with your spine? From here, can you imagine your belly button is pulling down to the mat before any other part of your body as your belly button or low back touches the mat, the rest of your spine gets to lie down. Deep breath at the bottom, we're only going for two more. Big inhale in as you reach your fingertips and toes. You can absolutely modify if those feet float off of the floor. Use those hands, they are there as tools. Climb yourself up if that feels more doable. Hinge over the toes like your palms are just hovering right above all 10 toes. Restack the spine. Give it all a little roll, bend the knees if you need, sitting upright, pull the belly button to spine. Tuck your pelvis, find your stop sign, your butt crack. Hang out for a second, make any adjustments you need to adjust. Can you tilt your pubic bone to the ceiling a little more? If you had a tail, it would be between your legs. Slowly continue to lie yourself bone by bone into the mat, arms extend back. Big reach overhead, big point through toes. Last one like this, and then we'll stay seated upright, fingertips to sky. Nod and curl, try and pause. Pause at the tips of your shoulder blades. If you get super necky here, already start to curl up. Otherwise, reach a little farther forward. Take your time. I want you to try and lift just that mid upper back off the floor. It's the hardest part. Pause. Finding your halfway point, let your gaze float up. Breathe a little heavier. And then on your next exhale, curl the rest of the way up and over those toes. This time you get to touch those feet. So find your hands to the bottoms of your toes if you have the flexibility. If not, you're just touching shins. But I do want you to pedal out those legs a little bit. Point through the toes, flex the feet, give yourself something yummy. Oof. Good. If roll ups and roll downs don't feel good for your body, there's so many culprits besides just weak abs. So don't take it as a loss. We can always adjust. Nice. From here, you're coming on to all fours, you guys. So finding yourself on all fours, if you have sensitive knees today, I want you to just fold your mat in half so you have extra padding on those knees. Find the hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips, and go for a good old-fashioned cat-cow. Lifting the chest forward, feet are in line with the kneecaps, chest is shining up without the crunch of your ears to shoulders. Take a breath in, give your head a little shake and go. And then you're going to start to scoop through the low belly, draw your belly button in and up, drop the crown of the head, let it Pour towards the floor as your hip bones flatten towards your elbows just a little bit. Feel your cheeks kind of melt into your eyeballs. And then widen your sits bones, shine your chest forward. Good, and then go for any cat cow you want. If a little ear to hip sounds like a really yummy situation, go for it. Trying to find that your head and tail are connected. So I always close my eyes and literally picture a slinky. I know I use that term all the time. But when one end of that slinky moves, it spirals all the way to the other end. It's all just one big piece. Take one more cat cow. Good, I want you to go ahead and bring your knees just a hair wider than your wrists. So not by much, but just a hair. You're gonna push your butt back in between your ankles. If this bugs you at all, just go for a normal child pose. Walk your hands an inch or two farther forward like you're getting a really big stretch, like someone's pulling those hands away from you. And then I want you to push from the palms. Let your butt drop a little heavier towards the floor. 
Feeling this deep hip crease, take an inhale. On your next exhale, with your arms still reaching forward, drop the crown of the head, round your nose to navel, and roll forward into a kneeling plank. Again, your knees are maybe just a little bit wider than your wrists. Make sure that your wrists are just beneath your shoulders, pause. Can you tuck your tail between your legs, shine your chest forward even more, and widen your shoulder blades apart? Deep breath in. On your next exhale, push the hips back to that child's pose. Nice straight arms the whole time. This is gonna turn into a bit of a flow. So move through whatever aspect of this you want. If you don't want the kneeling plank, which will eventually be a full plank, then absolutely just roll forward into quadruped and engage the abdominals as you shift your hips back. Reach the arms a little farther forward, start to move more like a wave than two sticks folding in half. Okay. Adding a little push up here, the next time that you roll forward, Feel that kneeling plank and pause. Knees are a little bit wider than the wrist, but the elbows are gonna stay narrow as you bring your chest towards the mat. Take a breath in, soften the shoulders down the back, elbows pulling towards your heels. Push right back up, shift your hips back. Adding that push up every time, now roll forward. Find your kneeling plank, long crown of the head, your turtle peeking out of its shell the entire time. Push back up, remember a one inch elbow bend is sufficient enough. That's what feels good, that's what you can control. Then that is your jam for the day. Nice, the next time that you push up, straight arms, stay in your kneeling plank. However you wanna step into a full plank, step into a full plank. Feet are gonna come nice and wide. From here, you're gonna pike the hips up, turning that child's pose into a downward dog. Again, if it's not your jam, knees stay down. Drop the crown of the head, roll the nose to navel, roll forward into your high plank. Feet are wide, elbows are narrow. Find your belly to the floor or find that one inch elbow bend. Push right back up. Woo! Pike your hips to the sky. Good, I took a bigger slice of cake on that push up than I, my body wanted to, so I'm gonna make that puppy a little smaller. Halfway, back up, pike the hips. Two more, you guys. So good. Last one. Amazing. Find your little push-up, find your plank, just hold if you can. Tuck your tail, wrap your biceps forward, tilt your chest forward and hold for three, for two, for one, hike your hips up, find your downward dog. Walk your feet towards your hands, find a forward fold. Whew. Radiate your life. Once you find the forward fold, just breathe. Sway a little to the left, bending the right knee. Sway a little to the right, bending the left knee. Do that one more time either side. You can always just hang in your forward fold. Good, I want you to go ahead and find center. Bend the knees as much as you need. Let the head hang, push into the heels, restack your spine, bone. Thigh bone. So now we get to turn it into even juicier feel goods. Arms are gonna reach up towards the sky. I know you can't see mine, but they're reaching to the ceiling. Just like you did lying on your back, you now get to do standing tall. You're gonna to start to candy cane forward. Feel that rounding of your spine. Feel that reach up and over your toes. Maybe your hands find the mat. Maybe you bend the knees for your hands to find the mat. Let your upper body go heavy. Let the back of your neck be long. Feel your weight in your heels, bend your knees even more. Start to round up, nose drags up the center of your body. Feeling your abdominals support you here as you restack your spine. Stand tall at the top, big reach of the arms to the sky. We just go for one more. Dive it forward. Let your upper body hang. Give it a sway, give it a pedal, give it whatever it needs. Try and keep your brain and awareness right here. Good. 
good. On your next breath, you're gonna find your butt exactly where your feet are, right in the center of your mat. You're gonna go ahead, perfect. Find your feet at one end, either extended or planted, whatever you did for your first set of rollbacks. Arms are just gonna reach over the toes one last time. I promise we're laying on our back for the rest of class. It's so exciting. You're gonna restack nice and tall. You're gonna pull your belly button to spine. Take your time as you roll yourself into your mat. At the bottom, feel your feet plant. Take your knees up towards the ceiling. Hands are gonna find your pelvis. Have your feet right in line with your butt cheeks. If you have a tendency to really push your ribs to the sky, you can go ahead and reach your arms to the ceiling and think about hollowing those front two ribs down. Otherwise, palms can press into the mat or stay on your hip bones, which is my personal fave. Just make sure you aren't hiking the shoulders. From here, you're gonna push into the feet. You're gonna draw your navel in, tilt your pubic bone to the sky, squeeze your butt a little bit and peel up into a bridge. You've articulated enough today that you should feel those glutes fire relatively quickly. If you don't, that's what your fingers are for. Give them a little poke, wake them up. Think about dragging your heels in towards your butt. Actively press down and drag a little bit and then tilt your tail between your legs even more. Give your head a shake, no, making sure you aren't tensing anywhere you don't need it. And then slowly continue to reach those knees over the toes, melt your spine all the way into your mat. At the bottom, let your butt relax, let your knees open wide. Close them back in. Tuck your pelvis, peel it up. Find yourself at the top. Drag the heels in, tilt your tail, poke the cheeks if you need it. Think of a tennis ball between your inner thighs as they reach over your second and third toe. Find a connection to the lower half of your body. And then slowly keeping that Reach forward of the thighs, melt your spine back down. Good, listening to the soft sounds of East Village honking as you breathe a little deeper for two. Good, back to the shoulders are pinned down. Never letting your pubic bone drop below your belly button. The next time that we peel those hips up towards the sky, we're gonna hold the bridge. Whatever variation of a bridge works for you today, palms again can stay heavy in the floor or reach up to the ceiling. Listen to your vibe. I want you to simply float your right heel off the mat. So all 10 toes are heavy, left foot is leaving a heavier footprint. Tilt your pubic bone to the sky, you can stay here. Or if you're feeling really solid, float the right leg to tabletop. If that immediately gives you a left hamstring cramp, bring that toe right back down. Tilt your pubic bone to the sky and try and make a stronger connection to that left glute. Breathe. Simply bring that foot right back down. Let the foot flatten, lift your hips again, melt the spine back down. Both feet heavy. We do that once on the left. Take a breath at the bottom. Tuck the pelvis. Peel your hips up. Find the lift of just the left heel. Take a second there. Press your right foot a little heavier. Tuck your pubic bone a little more. Effortlessly float the left leg up. Hold here. Tuck a little bit more. Try and make sure your hip bones are square. Ribs are drawing down. Abdominals are just as important here as your butt cheeks. Simply step that left foot down. Lift your hips. We stay lifted. Right heel lifts and floats up. With no shift, gently step that foot back down. Press into the right foot, left leg lifts. We just go for four. And the final set of pulses again. This can be a heel lift. You can totally keep your butt down and take this into just toe taps. Working through the abdominals to lift the leg. Stabilizing through the grounded leg. Woo! So good, we're almost there. The next time the right leg lifts, we're gonna hold it. You can keep it just like this, or you can straighten that leg to the sky. Flex your foot, little pulses up. Try and scoop from the belly. Try and drag that left heel in towards your butt cheek a little bit more for five. You can always do this with both feet down for four. Inner thighs are still drawing towards each other. Last two, last one, hold. Bend the knee with control. Replace the foot down, tuck the pelvis, find your bridge. We go to the other side, last little bit. Left heel lifts, float it up, 
Pause if you want to, straighten the left leg. Flex the toes, flatten that front right hip, little pulses up. I just want you to think about not how high you lift your pelvis, but how much you squeeze the little smile in under your right butt cheek. I always think of just cracking or crushing a little walnut, opening a pistachio, just crushing an M&M, <laughs> whatever it is that helps you find that squeeze for four. Last three, two, last one, bend the knee, replace the foot, hollow out the belly one last time. Melt your spine down into the mat. Let it go. Let your knees open wide. Take a breath in. If it feels doable for your hips, pull the knees in towards your shoulders, giving your pelvis a little tuck. I want you to take a couple slow stirs. That word always messes me up. Stirs. Anyway, slow stirs of your thigh bones in your hip socket. So put as much pressure as your shins will allow downward as you pull the knees in, giving your low back some length, giving those hip creases a nice little massage. Good. One more. And then plant the feet. Extend the left leg nice and long. Pull just the right knee in towards your chest. You're gonna guide that right leg up and over your left thigh. Try and bring that shin all the way to the floor and then open your right arm. If this feels good, nose up towards the sky. If this feels great, look over your right shoulder. If this twist is too intense, bend both knees for a little bit less intensity. Good. Try to loosen any tension you have in the neck or the traps. One more breath. And then control that knee back into your chest. Give it a little hug. Thank you, leg. Good job. Float that left leg into tabletop. Ooh, hip is a little tighter. We'll see how it goes. Find a little squeeze in. Give it a little hug of encouragement. Guide it up and over slowly to the right. Left arm opens wide. Right hand can stay on the thigh. Look up to the ceiling. If that feels okay or look over your left shoulder if that feels best. Try to let the back of the left shoulder be heavy towards the floor. It definitely doesn't have to touch the floor. One more big breath in and out. Find yourself back through center. With your legs long, take your hands to your body. Chest, belly, what else? Close your eyes. Take some big inhales and exhales here, seeing if you can feel that same warmth underneath the hands that you started with. And then if you're feeling okay to touch your neck and face today, I want you to take your hands, interlace them behind your head, but at the nape of the neck, so a little bit lower than you were for ab work. Feel your palms kind of resting right where your skull meets your spine and feel your thumbs along the sides of your neck. Almost like a little neck brace, but a nice one. Elbows can open wide if that feels good or tip slightly up if that feels better. Big breath in, heavy exhale out. Just give your head a little shake no without using any neck muscles, just using your hands. I like the massage chair at the pedicure. Take a little nod of your chin, letting your pinky slide up the back of your head a little bit, but pressing your head into your palms so you have eight chins. And then let it go. Do that one more time, just a little bit of traction. Like the top of your head is a Pez dispenser. I don't even know if those exist anymore, maybe. Good. Let your arms reach straight back overhead for one last little stretch through fingertips and toes. Arms are going to reach up towards the ceiling one last time. You get one final chance at that roll up. Take a deep breath in. Don't judge yourself. Nod and curl all the way up and over those tutsies. Take a breath in your forward fold. 
restack your spine, give your shoulders a little roll up and back, give your arms and head a little shake. And that's it, y'all. If you have any questions at all, whew, got sweaty on that one. Please reach out. If not, have a beautiful Tuesday, and I'll see you all next week.